What's going on there, Baby Dragon Squad? Today I have a Domain Monarch deck profile for you guys today. You don't need an extra deck for this deck. It's just based on trying to lock your opponent out of the game with cards like Domain and a couple other cool cards. I teched this version out quite a bit, but before we get into the deck profile, quickly remind, want to remind you guys that if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe and enable notifications by hitting that bell button down there so you guys can get notifications when I post a brand new video. And if at the end of the video you guys enjoyed it or happen to enjoy it, make sure you guys slap a like on this video. And if you guys want to help my channel grow and help me get to YCS Dallas and YCS San Diego this year of 2017 so I can compete and get awesome coverage for you guys, make sure you guys become a Patreon on my Patreon, uh, Patreon down below. Link is down there as always. Let's get into the deck profile. So first and foremost, this is a 40 card deck and we start off the deck with Triple Erebus. This card is arguably one of the biggest and most important bodies of the deck, allowing you to send Monarch Spells and Traps to the Graveyard when you tribute for him, and spinning some of your opponent's cards into the deck, which is really awesome with this deck. I really like that aspect of him. Uh, he's probably one of the more rewarding cards in this deck, just because this version, I, I chose to use a couple more tech cards than I did in one of the other Monarch variants, and it's a little bit more grindy. So you definitely have to be cost effective in the sense that uh, you want to loop this or any of your other Monarch cards or Tribute Monsters a lot more with Erebus than you would in any other variant because I'm running a little bit less Tributes in this deck than I was in uh, the Tribute Heavy variant so or anything similar to my Frog Monarch variant which I posted uh, about a week ago. You guys can go check that out on the channel. But this card's really, really good. Uh, in addition to him, we run the other big Monarch in one Ether. Unfortunately, it's at one. Hopefully Konami maybe bumps this up to two. They can keep Pantheism at one. Um, if they really want to, but I think it's kind of cool just being able to interact on your opponent's turn. Uh, in addition to the one Ether, I only run one Kuraz, just because I felt like it doesn't really make sense when this is at, uh, when Ether's at one to run more than one uh, Kuraz, just because it's only really valuable when you're g uh, going this off of Kur uh, Kuraz off of the Ether, and usually it's only decent when you have return on the field or you have other things you could potentially pop uh, to give you draws, because you never really want to be Kurazing your opponent's cards uh, that's like a last resort type of measure because obviously they're going to get free draws off of it. And if you're using his effect, you're potentially not going to be able to attack with him. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, there's some issues with him, but these are definitely some of the most like interactive cards, I think, in that deck. Uh, the other cards in the deck can kind of be uh, a little bit stagnant in terms of tribute summon monsters. Uh, but to kind of complement these guys, I'm also running a couple other bigs. First and foremost, I'm running... Thestalos, the Mega Monarch. I almost contemplated running uh, the regular Thestalos, actually the, the small 2400 Thestalos to rip a card out of the opponent's can. But the concern that I had with this deck is, is that if I run him, unlike Mega Thestalos, you're not actually able to look at their hand. You just randomly discard it. And with this deck, hand traps aren't very good against you. Um, e even like Ash can be subpar at times. Maxi is very subpar against this deck. Even Ghost Ogre can be subpar. Uh, unless they're like perfectly timed and even then they're kind of just very mediocre they're not as uh they're not as detrimental to your strategy and a lot of the times when i'd be playing against players and they had like a handful of cards and i knew they were running a lot of hand traps the problem was that when i was doing small thestalos i'd be hitting those hand traps and it's not really something i wanted to do i wanted to hit uh more higher impact cards so i just kept the one mega thestalos he's really solid and uh, i just like some of the combos you could do with this effect Next up, I run one Mega Caius, uh, Caius the Mega Monarch. He's probably my favorite big tribute summon monster other than Erebus, just because I like being able to have a free banish. Banishing's always been uh, a very pivotal uh, aspect of the game, being able to basically get rid of cards and have your opponent unable to get, get them back unless they have uh, a strategy or some kind of uh, uh, card that allows them to do so in their deck or in their uh, setup is, is very fantastic. He's really cool. Um, and you're potentially able to banish multiple cards with this effect. So I really like him. He's just a very huge body, just like uh, Erebus. So uh, I like him. Uh, last two tributes I run are one Majesty's Fiend and one Vanity's Fiend. My other version had double Vanity's Fiend in it. Uh, it was a little bit more glass cannony. It was focused on going first, but then it lost to Grind Game and going second, which I really didn't like. Um, which was obviously made this deck a little bit more dice rolly, which I didn't like. So first and foremost, I just run one and one. These cards are only really good when you have March of the Monarchs on the field or if your opponent is just bricking. And, and the only reason for that is, is if you have March of the Monarchs on the field, your opponent, if they have like Dark Holes and Regekis and so on and so forth, they're not really going to be doing too much against you just because they can't clear these bodies anyways. Um, but the other cool aspect of Majesty's Fiend is you're still able to search it because it has that 1,000 defense. So, and you can also reveal it off Tenacity, whereas uh, for Vanity's Fiend, because it has 1,200 defense, you're unable to do that. So that's kind of the downside of this and kind of the upside to Majesty's Fiend, but Vanity's Fiend effect is certainly much more impactful over the course of a game. 
um, at least over the short term course of a game, whereas Majesty Speed could potentially lock out an opponent uh, for a longer duration, depending on uh, what deck you're playing against. Next, I run some Tribute Fodder. We run uh, three Idea and double Eidos. Uh, I usually run three and three, or I run like three, two, and then like two Mithras usually, or some combination of Mithras plus these guys. I've never really liked the, the solely, um, or the, the solo Mithra deck, or just these guys. I've always liked a combination of both, and it's kind of crazy because I have the Mithra tokens. They look really awesome, but this is actually the first dom Domain Monarch variant that I'm playing that I'm not playing Mithra in. Uh, and the only reason for that is I'm actually trying out another card which I'll show you guys in, in, in a minute here, but it's a different type of Tribute Fodder. I recently showed it to you guys in my uh, Frog Monarch variant that I recently showcased last week. I highly encourage you guys to go see it if you guys want to watch a really crazy deck idea. Uh, but this, it's it's just very straightforward. I minimized this simply because I had other Tribute Fodder and I didn't really want to draw this because when you draw this, it kind of sucks. So uh, you definitely want to see the Idea much faster than this. And you also have Rota to search this, which isn't an issue. And then lastly, this just allows you to recu recuperate some of those banished monarch spells and traps or get back your pantheism if you've used it early game. And then we have one maxi. This is the only hand trap that I use. Just the only hand trap I've ever wanted in this deck. I don't really want any of the others. And the final monster I use is actually one Perform Pow Hip Hippo. If you guys saw my crazy deck idea for frog monarchs, you guys know that I use this in the deck in addition to three Super Hippo Carnivals. So... Uh, the concept with this, if you don't know what this is or if you happen to miss that deck profile, is this is great defensive and tribute fodder. So first and foremost, if you don't know what Performer Power Hip Hippo does is uh, when you summon him, you're basically allowed to get an additional normal summon. He's kind of like a Seraph Knight where you, get, you can summon a uh, level 7 or higher uh, mo monster from your hand so you can tribute for it. Obviously, you can't summon like Vanity's Fiend and Majesty's Fiend or Kuraz. But everything else, all your Mega Monarchs, all your you know your Ether and your Erebus, you are allowed to do with him, which is really cool. But the cool aspect about him is that you can play three Super Hippo Carnival, and I was going to be playing uh, Mithra in addition to Soul Exchange in this deck to try and uh, have some extra outs to opponents' boards. But I found myself losing out to the grind game, so I tried this card out, and it effectively does the same thing in some ways, except you don't have to. Tri uh, you don't have to basically give up your battle phase and what it does is it's a quick play spell and you can play more than one of it per turn and when you activate it you either you can basically summon a hip hippo so this card from your hand deck or graveyard so anywhere basically as long as it's not banished and then in addition to that you're able to have the choice to flood the rest of your field with as many tokens that are hippo tokens as possible but you can't tribute those tokens under any circumstance, and as long as those tokens are on the field, your opponent has to attack them, and you can't summon from the extra deck. But because this deck doesn't use an extra deck, that doesn't affect you. So those tokens, you're basically just going to use them during your opponent's turn when you when you flip this up to basically summon your Hip Hippo and get free defense out. And because they have to attack the tokens, if you have a free board and they don't have enough monster to kill all your tokens, your, to uh, your Hippo is going to stay on your field, and during your turn, you can use it to tribute. And... It's really, really cool because you can do this on your turn as well. Even if this goes to the grave, you can just activate Hi uh, Hippo Carnival and then just summon this back. So it's kind of cool. Obviously, the downside is is you're, sometimes those tokens kind of take up some space. And then lastly, the Tippo by himself drawing him isn't very good. You usually want to see this first. Uh, but again, it doesn't really matter because like even if you draw this and you draw this later on or you have both of them in your hand, they still work to a degree. So I like this. This is just something I'm trying out. I really like this this little mini engine. I like it just because it's defensive and it could allow use you to get those extra tributes. So um, I felt that this was a little bit better than Soul Exchange in some ways and the extra Mithra. Uh, for the remainder of the spells, uh, we run three domain. Uh, Domain of the True Monarchs is the most important field spell in the deck. I actually don't use any terraformings just because we have tenacity in this deck, but I was considering running it if I was to use more than 40 cards. Uh, when you have no extra deck and you have a Tribute Summon Monster, you're able to lock your opponent out of using their extra deck. And then in addition to that, if you have a big Monarch in your hand, you can basically drop it instead of being like a level 8, you can make it a level 6. Um, so essentially it's just it requires one tribute summon so this is really important you really want to establish this early game especially against zodiac decks or any other extra deck focused deck next i use three tenacities you have plenty of targets for this uh the only targets that uh you're not going to be able to use on is your tribute fodder your maxi your hippo and your vanity fiend but everything else you're going to be able to reveal for tenacity to search for a monarch spell or trap 
Uh, for the continuous spells, I use double uh, Return of the Monarch as well as double March of the Monarchs. Uh, this wasn't as popular in the past. I think this is kind of good just because uh, in this deck in particular, I'm running a lower tribute count and it's definitely good with the Fiends, Vanity and Majesty's Fiends. So I want to be, be able to have a little bit more protection with my stuff. And then if I'm resolving, you know, any of my, uh, either whether it be Tenacity or uh, Pantheism, I want to just be able to have double targets depending on how I'm doing the order. And this is a little bit weaker just because uh, Ether is at one, which means you can't really do all the constant Erebus, uh, not Erebus, excuse me, uh, Kuraz loops that you'd like to do with this card to pop it and so on and so forth to get those free searches. But it's still very important to be able to get your Ether early on and a lot of your other tribute summon monsters early on. So I run two and two. I think that's a very straightforward ratio. We run the one Pantheism. This card is uh, at one for a reason. It's a destiny draw that allows you to get, to get a free plus one after that. So this card's very absurd. Um, it's the best draw card in the deck for sure. I don't run uh, Allures or anything like that just because I'm running a relatively low dark count and I don't really want to banish any of my resources in this deck. And then one Monarch Storm for fourth. Uh, I wish this card was kind of still at three to be honest. Like I really like this card. I like being able to splash this into other decks more so than using it in Monarchs. Um, you know, decks like Cliff Forts and other tribute heavy decks, but or even Frog Monarchs for that matter. But this is really good, just being able to have an instant out. You can search it whenever, and uh, it's really good in this deck. It definitely, this was this was one of the big outs in the deck. I really, this is why I kind of wanted to run the Soul Exchanges, just to be able to have outs to my opponent's board. Uh, so yeah, uh, speaking of board outs, we have one Regeki, which is very straightforward. Uh, one, one for one. Definitely a vulnerable card in this deck, especially against Ghost Dash and Max C. Um, I don't know if it's even necessarily like like the reward of playing it is worth the fact that, that you could get hit by so many different card uh, different cards. Because when you use this, you discard a card, so you're already minus oneing yourself to get out something. Um, and unless obviously, if this goes off, obviously you're going to get yourself your Idea, which gets you your Eidos. But if that doesn't occur and you don't draw it or you don't see it, it's very subpar at best. Uh, Rota to get your Idea and one up start Goblin to help with the draw power to slim the deck down to 39 cards. And then for the traps, I run double Prime Monarch. This card is fantastic for grind game. I was running three of this in addition to multiple escalations, but I'm just doing two in one right now. This allows you from the grave to banish your Monarch spells and traps and then summon it back. And uh, it's really, really good. And when you activate it manually, you can activate it uh, when it's not in your graveyard. So basically you target two Monarch spells and traps and then put them back in your deck and draw a card. So this card's really good. I like the draw effect a lot more than the special summon effect, believe it or not. And this card allows you to tribute during your opponent's turn, which is really, really cool. And the last trap I run is double uh, the Monarch's Erupt. I actually was running a third one for a little while. Uh, and I, I, I don't know, I'd probably end up side decking the third one. I almost just want to run three just because of how devastating this card is. What it essentially does is it's a skill drain and it says that as long as you have a tribute summon monster on the field, it's a skill drain number one and then it's a continuous trap. So it just, it just sits there and you can search this because it's a monarch card. And then lastly, if uh, you don't have a tribute summon monster during your end phase, I believe it is, uh, send this card to the graveyard. So during your end phase, so even if your opponent clears, your Tribute Summon Monster during their turn when you have this card. This card will still remain on the field until the end of your next turn. So keep that in mind. This card can be very, pol uh, not polarizing, but it can be very, um, it can be one of those cards that can just really stagnate your opponent's game state. But uh, if you don't have, like, it's really cool to have this along with uh, March of the Monarchs on the field and then literally any Tribute Summon Monster, especially your Fiends, because honestly, when you have these, your uh it, it can be like first off this will shut down these but if your opponent deals with any one of these they'll have to deal with these and to deal with these they have to deal with march of the monarchs and it's just like it's one of those things where like even even if your monarch storm forth negates your fiends it's just like one of those like pseudo locks where, where no matter what they do they're in a very they're in a, they're in a big bind to be honest and uh, that's one of the things i like about it but really it's it's definitely ideal just to have this with any one of your big bodies uh, other than your fiends as well. I mean, it's not problematic to put these out, get their effects, and then during your opponent's turn, just activate the monarchs. Uh, the monarchs erupt. So I really like the monarchs erupt. I would almost consider using three of it in this deck if it wasn't for space. This deck is definitely one of those decks that's very, very tight on space, simply because there's a lot of cards you need to run that are very engine, um, engine dependent and basically uh, mandatory in the deck. They're very staple in the deck. So. That's it for the deck list. Um, there's no extra deck because you need to make this card work. You have to, to actually use this card. You have to have no extra deck, just like Domain. So keep that in mind. 
Uh, here's some cool Mithra tokens, I guess, just so you guys can look at them. But it's a cool deck. I, I really enjoy it. I think it's uh, it's one of those decks that you know budget players uh, will probably gravitate towards uh, at any time. I mean, it's it's a very, fairly cheap deck to make. Uh, you, as you guys can see, I didn't even put Desires in here, even despite the reprint. I didn't put Ghost Ashes in. I didn't put any of that. And it's still, you know, it's still a very budgety deck for the most part. You guys can get, you know, still get three structure decks and pretty much have the majority of the deck pretty much done. Uh, if you don't want to run the Perform Pal Hip Hippo stuff and the Carnivals, you guys uh, can probably run like a Mithra and maybe like another Vanity's Fiend or another uh, Mega Caius and probably like some other card, maybe like a Book of Moon would be pretty solid in this deck for some additional defense or even a Soul Exchange to try and deal with your opponent's boards. So uh, that's it for the deck. If you guys enjoyed this deck profile, please slap a like on it. It helps the channel grow. Uh, I put a lot of time and care effort into these kinds of decks, uh, even if they're pretty budgety. Um, and, I, and I really enjoy making decks for you guys. So I hope you guys take care. I hope you guys join me on my live streams. When I do live stream next week, I probably will be streaming a little bit more. Uh, unfortunately, this coming Saturday, depending on when you guys are watching this video, uh, I probably won't be at the San Jose Regionals. Stuff came up and uh, unfortunately I couldn't get a ride. Um, I currently don't have any transportation uh, right now, which really, really sucks. So uh, it's no big deal. You know, that's life. You can't, you can't go to everything, unfortunately. But hopefully I'll be able to go to the next Regionals. Um, but for sure until then, I'd really like to attend YCS San Diego as well as YCS Dallas. So make sure you guys help me out, are donating in my streams, and become a patron on my Patreon. Link down below in the description. Shameless plugs for those uh, rewards. I'll see you guys. Take care. And uh, smash that like button and subscribe if you're new here. And don't forget to join the Baby Dragon Squad. Drop hashtag Baby Dragon Squad in the comment section down below. Take care, Duelists. Peace out. And uh, that's it. That's basically a domain mark, monarchs and a gist. Uh, take care, duelist, and always remember to believe in the heart of the cards. I'll see you guys next time.